what is up welcome back to another video this is about this nikon fe here i've talked about this a few times before uh, but fe's and fm's look virtually identical there's a few things that you can do to tell them apart the first most obvious thing is that an fe will likely not work when you try to shoot it so Jokes aside, the FE is an electrical camera, and you can tell that by the auto switch here. An FM will not have that, and then also on the rear of the camera here, the serial code will start with an FE, as an FM will start with an FM. So that's an easy indicator there. This FE was broken, and it was really broken, but I have it fixed. I'm going to talk about the repair process because this is a very important and valuable lesson. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Let's focus in on this. So this camera came to me. The customer actually came by my shop here and dropped it off. And initially she suspected that this piece here, the uh, back door release and the ASA dial, those were just broken. She's like, oh, maybe just those need to be replaced. I was like, okay. So I asked her, like, she's sitting here, we're chatting and stuff. I'm asking her, like, what, what was wrong with it? And she had apparently dropped the camera like this. Something like artist rendition of dunk, and broke this whole thing. And you can kind of tell by, like, that den and all that stuff that this was a little bit askew. So I thought, all right, that's fair, fine, whatever. So I start disassembling this, and I notice a few things. One this plate that sits underneath all of this. This is the uh, resistance piece for the, um, basically for the aperture here for the ASA and for the exposure compensation. All of this is in this piece. This is horribly bent out of shape. This itself, I had to replace this because it was also bent out of shape. All the mechanisms here were broken on this side. And so that's where I want to talk about this is because it's very, very important if you are working on a camera, if you're sending a camera out to a place to be worked on, if you're buying a camera off somebody that might not work, get as much information about it as you can because that will help you minimize the uh, potential variables that uh, could lead to the camera not working and it just makes your life so much easier. And because I knew where the issue took place i knew where i could like centralize a lot of my attention was on this side of the camera and obviously too it's worth checking out the other sides as well but when things are kind of acting up understanding the location of which it could be caused and then also understanding the potential issue like for instance because it was dropped things are going to be bent out of shape maybe like disoriented, whatever. If it was dropped in water, okay, now I'm looking for water damage. Now I'm looking for, again, the same issues with it being dropped. If it was uh, caught in a fire, you know, whatever, like whatever the case may be, you start looking for these things. Any and all information you have, the more you have, the better it is. So let's break down what was wrong with this. After I replaced those parts, I put it back together and I tried firing it. And what happened was the mirror went up and the curtain stayed open. It was almost as if it was taking like a very long exposure. Now this is interesting because on a typical FE, it will fire without electrical control on these two speeds, bulb and M90, which is mechanical 90. I'm gonna punch in a little bit. It'll fire on these two speeds. Any of these other speeds require electricity. And if you don't have electricity to the camera, if the, battery, if the batteries are dead, if there's no batteries in it, or very likely what happens is the battery compartment, the wire that goes in there becomes separated. Here's another FE. Um, this wire here, most of the time becomes separated and corroded. If that is not reaching the rest of the circuit, the mirror will go up, but the shutter will stay closed as if it's taking like a self timer. And it isn't until you return it to M90 or bulb that the mirror will drop and then you can fire it again. You have to advance and fire it again. But the point being is that is a pretty clear indicator that there's not enough power to the system. So going back to what this was doing, it was almost as if I was firing it on bulb and holding down the shutter for all of that time. I wasn't doing that. so. And it's quite literally something I've never seen before. 
but it, this is just what it looked like. It just looks like a black abyss in there, but you can see that's what it looked like. So that all being said, I'm looking now for electrical shortages all throughout here. And what I noticed was that the moment that I grounded a contact to the body of the camera, either with tweezers or with, I was um, testing the voltages with my digital multimeter deal. When I would test that, it would short and the mirror would drop. And then I tried doing it a few times where I would short it out and then fire at a shutter speed and then just wouldn't fire. And then I was also getting inconsistent readings. Sometimes the light meter would work and sometimes it wouldn't. So I tore it down a little bit more. That's when I noticed that this was all bent out of shape. So then I replaced this piece with an, another piece from a donor camera, of which I have many because again, FEs hardly ever work. That being said, if you have one that works, congratulations. Um, but anyway, replace that. And then what I noticed after some trial and error with basically rewiring everything in the camera, because I've had this for a couple weeks now, was very simply that this, the battery check light. If you short this contact here, this light will come on if the camera has power. This was bent askew in such a way that it was shorting out the contact that was sitting here. So that way you couldn't adjust the ASA. And I noticed that the moment that I put a little bit more pressure on this so it wasn't touching the contact there, the camera worked just fine. So that all makes sense. Keeping in mind that it was dropped, it was dropped on this side, it just got jostled out of place. As frustrating as it is, that is the reason why this camera doesn't work. It works fine now, but that's why it's very important to go into these repairs knowing what's wrong with the camera leading into that, and then that helps you identify potential solutions to those problems. And because it was something so minor, it's a little bit frustrating because I spent a lot of time and I've worked on literally the whole thing because I was trying to figure it out. But knowing the information going into it helped narrow down potential issues and all of that so that is it that's how i fix this fe if your fe is firing the mirror sticks up and the curtain stays open regardless of what speed you're at uh, look for potential shorted shorts on the board somewhere try to not drop your camera and uh I don't know that that's really all the lessons I have for you today. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.